Hey everyone, my name is Hunter Polly, and today I want to go over my 2021 Tacoma 3rd Gen um, overlanding setup, walk through the stuff that I have added to the truck as it sits right now, and then also go over the cost of everything, because that's something that we really don't think about when we buy a truck like this, of all the additional costs that start to add up after you start adding all of these modifications. So starting off, we have to talk about the truck because that is the base of it all. This is a 2021 third gen Tacoma and the cement color. I purchased this in December of 2020 from a Toyota dealership in Bozeman, Montana. And at the time there was actually zero markups when I did purchase this vehicle. It is the off-road model. So it does have the stock e-locker in the rear and I did opt for the tech package which included the LED C um, DRL headlights in the front. Um, the LED headlights are phenomenal in this truck and I've actually heard some people say they are better if not the same quality as like the Morimoto's or um, Alpha Rex headlights as well except more durable in that sense. Um, with the tech package, you also get some additional modifications or um, changes on the inside, including the ability to remote start your vehicle using the Toyota, Toyota app, which unfortunately you have to pay for. It's $8 a month, but for me, um, seeing where my vehicle or my truck is at all times, the ability to remote start, um, unlock, lock doors, etc., stuff like that is worth the cost for me. For example, I was in Hawaii on vacation and I was still um, actually able to unlock the truck doors all the way in Montana. Um, so well over thousands of miles away, um, still able to unlock lock the doors and see the status of the truck. All right, so the first thing that we need to cover is the wheel and tire setup. Uh, the wheels are what I have ran essentially after getting the truck. Um, I think I purchased these when I hit around 5,000 miles on the truck. So they've basically been on the truck for 40,000 plus miles now. No issues, no problems. I have aired down to 18 PSI. Um, the actual tire is held on just fine. I have bashed them up against rocks. As you can see, and there are some scratches on some of these um, wheels, but these are the rock tricks from Amazon. And at the time of purchasing these um, back in 2021, they were just shy of $600. So $599.96 for four wheels, which is a pretty damn good price if you ask me. In terms of tires, this is not the same tire that are upgraded to when I purchased these wheels, but I have ran the Falcon Wild Peaks for all my tires. Um, first one was a little bit bigger stock size. The second set that I actually got was a True 33, so 285, 70, 17. And now I'm actually running the Falcon Wild Peaks RT, which is a mixture between a mud train and their all train. And these are a 285, 75, 17. So technically a 34. And if you check the Falcon website, it's actually a 34.1, which in my opinion is a very good balance between a 33 and a full on 35, which requires a ton more modifications. I didn't have to do much to fit these rather than, or um, besides just some trimming, which is obviously common with 33s to begin with. Now the second modification that I ever did to the truck was actually purchasing rock sliders. Uh, I knew I wanted to tr take the truck off road and something that I read a lot on the forums is that people wish they would have purchased rock sliders first. Okay. Obviously after getting some bigger tires and wheels, you want to get a little bit more risky with the stuff that you're doing, especially off road. Um, and if you are not careful enough, you can actually damage this bottom rocker panel, um, which if you search online, people that don't have rock sliders, this gets damaged. Okay. This is a very expensive fix. And if damaged enough, you cannot even open up your door. So rock sliders from running for tacos was 800 and $99.96 as well, okay? Um, so a hefty purchase, but in my opinion, if you're taking this truck off-road, if you are getting into situations where you may hit the side of the truck, the sliders are mandatory. And another added benefit is as a step, 
you can use this to step um, up to get stuff off the rack or even higher up. And these specifically are at a 15 degree angle, which um, makes a perfect balance between the step and then also has enough clearance on the side as well. Now on the topic of rock sliders, we also have to talk about the other armor that I've added to the Tacoma, mainly being a full underbody skid package from RCI. I decided to go with aluminum over steel, just mainly due to the weight saving properties that you get with aluminum versus steel. Uh, if you're looking up the weights of the aluminum versus steel, steel skid plates, it is going to be vastly different. Uh, and that was one of the main reasons why I went with it, um, just due to the weight. Now, in terms of protection, obviously aluminum is going to provide a better protection than having nothing and the very thin um, paper cutter uh, skid plate that comes with the Tacoma. In terms of you know steel versus aluminum, that is going to be a decision that you're going to have to make. The aluminum has held up just fine for the hits and the bashes that I have um, taken this truck through, but obviously if you are planning on rock crawling, smashing your skids a lot, probably going with steel would be the better option. But for the hits that the aluminum skids have taken, it's been just enough. Um, that package, the full skid, including a rear diff steel skid plate, cost me $1,195.67. Now, in terms of the lift kit that I'm running, it is just a basic nitrogen charged um, lift kit from Dobinson's. It's been fantastic. I've loved it. Um, as a disclaimer, though, I've never uh, been on or driven in a truck that has anything else like Kings, etc., stuff like that. In terms of upper control arms, I am running SPC upper control arms, and then the leaf pack in the rear is actually upgraded as well. Um, I'm running a Deaver Stage 3, which is overkill for the current setup, and I might actually have to take a pack out um, in there. Now, as purchased, the original setup had a leaf pack rated for about 400 to 600 pounds in the rear. Um, this kit cost me $2,040.50. Now, in regards to the Deaver Stage 3 that I did upgrade um, to during my second setup and that I currently have on there right now, the Deaver Stage 3 um, with a Timberin U-Bolt flip kit, um, just the leaf pack itself cost me $1,162.70. And then the Timberin U-Bolt flip kit costs an additional $300 on top of that. So uh, basically nearly $1,500 just to upgrade the leaf pack and then also do that U-Bolt flip kit in the rear. All right, we are slowly making our way around the truck here and we have arrived at the front where we have the Backwood Adventure Mods bumper. So some key things about this, um, it's very light, weighs about 85 pounds, and that includes a steel winch cradle and then the aluminum shell or case outsiding here, which is fantastic. It's one of the reasons why I selected this bumper is mainly due to weight. Inside the winch cradle, we have a Warren 10 VR winch with synthetic rope and then a Factor 55 lead. Uh, the bumper, alone was $2,191.65. That included the reinforcements for the winch cradle as well on the sides. Uh, the winch, the VR10 winch was $754 with the Factor 55 here coming in at $278.15. Now, while we're in the front, we're gonna talk about the lighting that I also have in the front here. So these are Diode Dynamics SS5s, um, and I also have these up on the roof. But the two that I'm running up here in the front, when I purchased these, um, it was 368. That included the two lights that I'm running, and then also the amber covers here. Now, the fog lights that I'm running are not um, SAE approved, so I only turn them on when I'm off-road, but at the time of purchase, those were $175 from Dio Dynamics as well. Again, one of, the one of the first purchases that I actually made 
um, in terms of lighting. And ever since then, I've basically have ran diode dynamics mainly from here on out. Now, in terms of the roof rack that I'm running, this is from Sherpa Equipment Company outside of Colorado. Um, they have been fantastic. Their racks are incredible. I ran the full size rack before and now I'm running the half rack. This is the Sherpa Animus, um, which fits extremely well with the GFC and has enough room for me not only to mount my SS5 light bar, but also the max tracks up on top, including the Wii Boost. So the rack itself was $549. The max tracks, which I have a set of two, including the pins up on top, cost me an additional four hundred and thirty-five dollars. Um, the rock light mounts themselves, um, I have four total, so two in the rack, two in the GFC. Those were a hundred and twenty dollars. Um, the Wii Boost, as well. Um, has been fantastic. It does not give you cell service in areas where there is no cell service, but if you have a slight signal, this will actually help boost that up um, a couple bars for you. And it has been a situation where I pulled into a spot, I have one bar, I throw the Wii Boost on, and I can go to three or four bars. Um, so again, the rack was $549. We covered the cost of the uh, Max Tracks. The Wii Boost itself was $350 from REI, which I got it for a steal. Um, and then the SS5 light bar that is up in the top um, has been fantastic. Again, I love Diode Dynamics. It's the first set of lights that I ever bought. I think they are a very affordable brand. Um, that does compete with Baja Designs at this point. Um, each company offers great products and really at the end of the day, it's totally your preference on what you want to use this lighting for. But with the backlit option that goes with the SS5s, uh, it is probably one of my favorite things about them. And the light output is astonishingly really good. Like the light output is fantastic with this light bar. Um, it's done everything that I've asked it to. It's never leaked, um, never had any issues with it or anything else like that. But <laughs> the cost of the SS5 um, light bar, which is the Sport model, was $1,580. In terms of the ditch lights that I'm running, these are the SS2 um, from Dio Dynamics with brackets from Anderson Design and Fabrication. They're famous for designing and creating Subaru parts, um, but they actually created these brackets. They're not the lowest profile. There are brands out there that have much lower um, profile brackets for mounting the ditch lights, but in total, this all together, the bracket, the light um, from Diode Dynamics cost me $300. These are the sport model as well, and they also have the backlit option. As I mentioned for rock lights that are not in the wheel wells, I'm running the Baja Design rock lights on the side here. I do have the amber color. I have a total of four of those. Inside the GFC, I actually have three more. Um, rock lights that actually utilize the button. And then the rear brake light actually utilizes four more Baja Design rock lights for a total of 11 Baja Design rock lights on the truck, totaling um, $660 for 11 of the Baja Design style rock lights. Now, since we are talking about lighting, we also have to talk about what controls all of that lighting. So I am running a Switch Pro panel here, which you can see I have everything filled up. So all eight options are filled. A pillar is the ditch lights, rear is the chase lights, Baja Designs in the custom GFC printed brake light. Roof is the SS5 light bar up on top. Bumper is the two SS5s on the bumper. DRLs will turn on all the backlit options on the SS5s, including the SS2 backlit ditch lights. Rack is the side lighting, which is the Baja Designs for rock lights. 
Underglow is the six Baja, sorry, six diode dynamics rock lights that are running. And then this little antenna looking thing or siren looking thing is actually the Wii Boost. So I can turn that on and off versus it always constantly running in the background or having to actually plug that into a cigarette port. Now, the Switch Pro panel has been <laughs> phenomenal. I ran a Oxbeam one or a Nylite one before this. And this is just a complete game changer in terms of controlling the way that you utilize your lighting. Um, at the time of purchase, this cost me $599, and then I'm actually running a Miso Customs or Cali Raised LED custom insert. So you can actually order this directly from Miso Customs. Um, this was free. Um, I did not purchase this actually. I was able to get this through a friend. Um, um, but again, you can customize the button layout from or on their website with um, depending on what buttons you want to use and then also the insert for the controller. All right, and let's move on to one of the bigger modifications that I put onto the truck and that is the GFC canopy camper, um, which includes obviously the shell and then the pass through into the tent with the tents itself. So at the time of purchase, um, including options that I have on this, so I have no bottom window, so I opted for no um, rear window and then no back window for the ability to see through or out. Um, I opted just completely to get rid of that. The only options that I have had included with this tent is the additional side windows on the actual um, tent fabric. At the time of purchase, which was October of 2022, this tent cost me $8,300 with the installation taking place in Belgrade, Montana. With GFC now, there is a lot more facilities that have popped up around the country. So if you're not in Montana and if you don't want to make the drive to the headquarters here, um, there are a lot of install locations all the way from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast now. So you have your pick. Obviously, installation and delivery is going to be additional in those places, but if you do choose to come to Montana, which I would definitely recommend, the headquarters is phenomenal. Now, in terms of the awning that I have on the side here, this is the Overland Pros Raptor 6K, which provides phenomenal coverage in terms of shade. It is a 270 degree awning with a little bit of extra wraparound in the front. Now, in terms of this awning at the time of purchase, it cost me just under $800 coming in at $795. And then in order to mount this, I actually had to purchase some awning brackets from GFC. I decided to go with four due to the weight of the actual awning. So I'm lumping those brackets under random GFC accessories, which also includes some lights that I installed inside the headliner that I also installed, and then some other just little goodies, random stuff that I purchased from Amazon and other distributors. Um, so the awning itself, again, $7.95. The brackets, random GFC stuff was $500, roughly, give or take. The awning brackets, they have since changed, so the price has also changed on those as well. All right, and then moving to the back of the truck, we have the Mountain Hatch tailgate insert which in my opinion is a must especially if you're planning on cooking on your back tailgate area at the time of purchase this cost me 249 dollars it is a cutting board material so you can cut directly on the surface has two cup holders over there and then a random spot right here to basically add extra storage if needed Now, the other thing that I've added in the rear, just due to the additional weight, is these Cali Rays bed stiffeners. Again, it's essentially almost a must if you're adding any weight to the back of the Tacoma, just due to the composite bed and the flexing of going off-road. Um, at the time of purchase from Amazon, those cost me $109.99. 
Now you will see on the floor and then also on the side of the truck here is this carpet liner. This is actually a bed rug. Um, it is custom fit and custom molded to your vehicle. Um, obviously bed rug has all these vehicles scanned, but this provides great comfort on your knees. There's no of the wavy plastic when you're trying to crawl um, across the bed here. Um, easy to clean and if it gets wet it is fine it does dry it will not mold per the bed rugs website so that has been a fantastic addition and at the time of purchase that cost three hundred and sixty five dollars and forty six cents now getting into the bed of the truck you can see that i have added some rear power here with some uh, ports for charging, which I'm actually charging the camera batteries right now. Um, we have a custom built bench with storage underneath. Um, basically allows me to store my cooking stuff in there, have a tote. I did cushion this and again, used indoor outdoor carpet for this as well. We have two camping chairs right here. We have the Jetboil Genesis. We have some pillows. And then on the rear, we're actually utilizing the Duluth Trading Co. Um, this is the truck organizer that fits perfect in the GFC. We also have the additional rock lights up there that has the button and then two more additional rock lights, which we can turn on just like that. All right, so now we are up in the actual GFC, and you will see there are a couple of different modifications that I've done. First off is the headliner. So this is actually indoor, outdoor carpet that has been applied with 3M adhesive spray. It is the Super 90, I believe, which is heat resistance, which is the one that you want to use. And it makes for this fantastic patch wall which I've installed all the patches from the national parks that I've been to, including a few other patches. And then for the sleeping platform, I actually have utilized the Hest Dually Long, um, which is by far one of the best sleeping upgrades that I've done. It still folds out of the way, fairly easy. And again, you can move these floor panels with ease as well um, to give you this full standing space in the back of the truck as well. Now the Hest mattress is not a cheap upgrade. At the time of purchase, I did spend $400 from REI on one of their 20% off sales. The headliner was fairly inexpensive. I believe that cost me in total probably about $55 or $60, including the carpet from Lowe's slash Home Depot, and then also the spray adhesion. Now, in the side here, I am running some LED lights as well. Um, that was included in the cost of the additional GFC accessories. Now, in terms of the back seat, I have none. Um, I have done a full rear seat Tacoma Goose Gear Delete, um, which is awesome because it gives you all of this flat storage with these cubbies. So you can store tools, whatever else you want to store, um, and the additional space for securing a refrigerator is fantastic. And then also having a dog bed in the rear is also great. The full Goose Gear Delete with shipping from Running for Tacos cost me $1,310.10. In terms of the refrigerator that I'm running, this is just a cheaper set power refrigerator that I purchased actually from Amazon. And at the time of purchase with the cover included was only $200. It has been fantastic in the overall durability. I will say it probably draws slightly more power than something like a Dometic or an Iceco. But for me, it's been fantastic running off of the dual battery that is also underneath the hood, being recharged by the solar panel that is up on top. Now, excuse the mess here in the front seat, but this is an Expedition Essentials Tacoma mount. 
Um, as you can see, this is also one of their older models. So now the newer models have a continuation of this back base plate. But that was something that you had to purchase extra at the time that I did get this. I am running an iPad mini with GPS capabilities on there, including a Garmin inReach. Uh, mini, not the two. That is just the mini from Costco that I actually purchased. And at the time of purchase, the Expedition Essentials cost me $230.50. Um, the And at the time of purchase, the Expedition Essentials mount cost me $230.50. The iPad mini with GPS capabilities cost me $375. The Garmin inReach mini cost me $200, which does not include the monthly $15 service fee that I also pay for on top of that. The various RAM mounts came out to be about $125 which is necessary to mount the iPad, the Garmin inReach, and then also my phone right there. Some other interior mods that I have done has included a Garmin dash cam. This specific model cost me $200, um, purchased this from Amazon on sale. And another modification that you can see is I have no mirror, um, again, I did not do the windows on the GFC and I just completely removed my mirror. Now I could have done the always on rear view mirror attachment that a lot of these companies are selling. I just wanted the extra space. I have the backup camera, the sensors, all of that. So it wasn't a necessity for me to see in the back. Some other modifications, again, Miso Customs Chrome Delete the Miso Customs uh, shift knob, which is linked to my ECT button just by clicking this on the side. The Chrome deletes there. Um, and then also on the door panels, I have the blackout from Miso Customs as well. Along with that, we have the dual map lights in the front here, and then the dome light as well. And these will actually switch between red and white so fantastic very bright love them a great addition to the truck some other modifications to the driver's side at least is these seat jackers which elevate the front of the driver's seat just slightly to alleviate the back pain that so many of the tacoma drivers complain about including myself these again um, I was skeptical if they would actually work, um, if they would help with the back pain, and I can say for 100% uh, certainty that they 100% do. Um, they've been fantastic, and even on those longer trips, uh, I no longer get that severe back pain. Um, obviously, very extended drives, which, you know, five, six, seven plus hours, it does start to creep in, but even on those shorter drives now, it is non-existent. Now, in terms of now, in terms of cost for the seat jackers, those were $100 at the time of purchase. Now, in terms of what is happening underneath the hood, to keep it short and sweet, it's a lot. Um, the main heart of this is the BCDC Red Arc 1225D charge controller, which also manages the solar input on the roof from the Renogy 175 watt flexible panel. Um, at the time of purchase, the Renogy 175 watt panel cost $265. The Red Arc battery manager cost $349. Um, we have the solar input and the Switch Pro mount there is a lot going on again and then for the dual battery we are running the odyssey group 34r which provides 64 amp hours and it's sitting in that auxiliary location over there using a rego fabrication battery box the battery itself costs 350 dollars and then at the time of purchase for the rego fabrication the battery box cost an additional $175, if I recall correctly. 
Now, something that a lot of folks don't upgrade when they do a battery system um, overhaul is the terminals. I am utilizing two pairs of the SDHQ battery terminals and the two pairs together cost $325. Now, in terms of wiring it, I did not do the wiring job for this. It was a little bit outside of what I could handle, um, and I did hire out for that. And the estimated labor cost for the wiring with some parts included, such as terminals on certain things, the Switch Pro panel mount over there for the vehicle. In total, that did cost right around $2,500. Now, I'm sure I've missed some things in this video, um, additions that I've added to it, but I have just added some extra estimated cost onto this as well. Uh, camping, cooking stuff, miscellaneous stuff that I have in the rear, like the camping chairs, the jet boil, et cetera, stuff like that, all had to be purchased. I'm estimating that to be right around $750 just from some quick calculations that I've done in my head just for the cost of the jet boil, the two chairs, knowing what those cost. Um, miscellaneous parts, wiring, stuff that I have purchased for the truck on my own. I'm estimating, estimating that to be another additional $350. And then miscellaneous labor, including having a shop install the leaf pack, having a shop install the lift and anything else like that. Um, I'm adding another like $2,000 on top of the additional $2,500 that I've had for the wiring labor install. So in total, probably close to $4,000 to $4,500 just in labor. Again, that's installing the lift, changing out the leaf pack when I went to the deeper stage three and also doing the wiring. A lot of that stuff you could do yourself. I just didn't have the tools, I didn't have the resources. And to be honest, I didn't have the knowledge at the time to do it myself. Now there is a lot of YouTube videos online that you can watch that uh, makes it fairly simple and straightforward to do the lift. If you have the time, if you have friends that are nearby that can assist, I would say save the money, do the labor yourself, and you'll cut out a lot of costs just with that. So now, uh, the biggest thing that you're probably wondering is how much did all of this cost? to do. Um, I have a running total here. Again, this is going to vary probably by a thousand um, plus or minus just because I've added other things onto this. I've changed some things and I've also told you guys some other things where you could possibly save some money if you do it yourself, etc. So like that. But everything that I have mentioned in this video, everything that I've added to the truck as it sits right now, the running total um, for all the modifications minus the truck itself. The modifications come in at $35,107.62. So very, very close to the cost of the truck, which came in at just about 41,000. Um, so in total, this is not a cheap thing to do. Um, if you are getting into overlanding and if you wanna build a truck, you know, if you have those desires and those dreams to build a truck that is very similar to this or other ones that you see on social media. So we'll give you a rough idea of how much this actually costs. Now, the important thing to remember is that this is my third setup. So I had the traditional bed rack rooftop tent on as my first setup. The second setup, I had the deck drawers, the smart cap, the CVT mount hood on there. I was fortunate enough to sell all of those, the uh, two previous setups, and actually make a little bit of money um, when I moved into the GFC. So the GFC at the time was basically almost maybe a wash in terms of what I bought it for and all my previous investments with the other setups. If anything, I maybe had to spend a couple hundred dollars to get it, but it's not much when I do all my calculations. Um, basically, I got to this setup by trial and error of going through all the previous setups. So before you start just purchasing all these modifications, buying a rooftop tent and doing all of that, really sit down and determine what you wanna do in terms of a build. Obviously that's going to come as you get out there more and you experience that. And that's exactly what happened with me is I started off with a very basic setup. I loved it. I wanted to get out more. I upgraded my setup to what I thought would be my end all be all dream setup and <laughs> Little though I know, seven months later, I sold that setup, the deck drawers, the smart cap, the CVT mount hood, and I landed with a GFC, okay? 
but do your research, have some patience, don't impulse buy. Um, I've been there, I've done that, and it's the last thing you wanna do. So just get out there, use your truck as it is, explore, um, ask other people in the community, um, ask if you can see what they're using their rigs for, what setups they have. And the best thing you can probably do is actually go to an expo and see a lot of these products in person, feel the product, um, you know, ask the people that are there selling the product, ask them questions. And it really gives you a solid idea of, you know, is setup A, setup B, or setup C the best setup for you? I hope you guys enjoy this video. This is the first video on this channel. I want to do a build walk around where I'm currently at right now. Future videos will be out exploring, doing some overlanding trips, um, some ASMR, ASM, ASMR sound videos, which uh, seem to be pretty, pretty big hit. I like making those types of films and those types of videos as well. So expect to see more of those in the future. If you're new to the channel, please like this video. It really helps just the algorithm pushing this video out further. Make sure to subscribe for future content as I am aiming to push out or pump out at least two videos per month. I'm setting as a baseline for me. And then if we can, trying to push for maybe a video a week or four videos a month. Okay. If you guys have any questions on the build itself, leave a comment down below. Um, I'm going to have a full build list in the description as well with some links where I can put them. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.